Welcome everyone, and happy the final shape day to you all. Uh, who here has completed the new campaign on Legend? As quite honestly, the story was a 10-10, and the unlocking of new weapons and Prismatic has shown Bungie ain't holding nothing back. Talking about Prismatic, let's start with our first Prismatic Warlock build that should sound familiar to most people. A using Getaway Artist, I'm no time to explain, allows our character to have two automated souls that track and damage enemies near us. But with Prismatic added, we can expand this to 4 instead, all with their own unique effects and tricks. And you are going to be the first one to see this full hand with how busted Prismatic Warlocks can get with the right combos. Also, with how powerful some of the fragments have now become, it will make it a whole lot easier to craft a build without the need of mods. So let's make a start. Let's start with the concept of the build, our aim is to maximise full ability cooldown, have continuous abilities available to use, and most importantly be able to use our abilities on the fly back to back. And luckily with how Prismatic works you can achieve this with little effort as long as you know what to use. A getaway artist azotic trait dynamic duo states convert your art grenade into an arc soul and become amplified. Pretty standard azotic that allows us to create a more powerful version of the base arc soul. We then combine this with no time to explain with his azotic trait rewind again which states Precision shots and shots against combatants, slowed or frozen by stasis, will return ammo to the magazine. As the build will be using stasis quite a bit through abilities and weapons, this effect will allow a secondary trait to kick in, time slip, which states, add 10 stacks of rewind again, a small portal will open, shooting the bullets from an alternative version of this weapon. This here when combined with getaway artists will ultimately allow the player to double the damage against all enemies nearby and if you play it smart, it can be hugely beneficial as a boss DPS option. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. Helion, where activating your class ability will summon a solar turret that lobs flame projectiles at targets. Targets damaged by the mortar are scorched. Bleak Watcher, where holding your grenade will convert into a stasis turret that fires slow projectiles at targets. A facet of dawn, where powered melee hits against targets grants radiant. A powered melee final blows grant radiant to you and allies. A facet of coverage where your arc, solar, and void abilities deal increased damage to targets inflicted with darkness buff. Facet of ruin, which increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target and increase solar ignition's radius. A facet of balance where rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee. A doing this with dark abilities grants grenade energy. A facet of purpose where picking up an orb of power grants either amplified, restoration, Frost, Wovermel, or Overshield based on the damage type of your super. And Facet of Hope will grant an increased class ability regen while you have an element above active. Quite lengthy in text, it should be pretty understandable as to what the build is doing here. We have ability cooldown usage via Facet of Hope and Balance, which will aid our weapons and aspects from start to finish. We have enhanced ability effects via Facet of Dawn, Courage, and Ruin. And then lastly, we have some self-protection available via Facet of Purpose. It's combining everything that makes the light and dark subclass good, and then mix them together to make them equally even more powerful, and all of this is from the star fragments you get. Down the line, we'll explore the other fragments as well to see if the build can be drastically improved for further endgame content, but at the moment, even for endgame environments, it packs just enough heat to survive certain encounters while playing solo. Also to note, you must be using an art grenade to activate Gateway Artist's effect as it will not work with anything else. For the mods and stats, we have both recovery and discipline marked as our top priority. Strength is also marked as high priority, but in our cases it will get most of its support via our fragments and weapons of choice. Recovery, we have ours at tier 10 for a 48 second cooldown. Although Warlocks have a naturally faster class ability when compared to others, it's always wise to maximise it fully if you're going to be using it heavily within the build. In our case, with Helion available, we will be using this exclusively along with our other abilities on hand. I've also added the following for more support in this area. Focusing Strike times 2 which grants 17% energy, Orbs of Restoration for a 10% energy for all, and Distribution times 2 for a 6% ability energy for all. A Discipline we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. The following grenade is required for the build so we can activate our exotic usage here. And since this slot is so high, you can add the grenade kickstart mod to help the slot even more, 
but I would advise against it, since the board is pretty self good with generating the right amount of energy needed. And literally, having the demo perk is all that you'll need, but having the impact induction mod will grant you a 12% grenade regen that honestly is useful with how fast we can generate melee energy. Additional mods, which are highly recommended, we have the following. Having the Kinetic Siphon mod, my powerful attraction mod for producing and collecting all the power within a build, is highly recommended. Then adding Heavy Finder, Reserves, and Scavenger and mods are highly recommended for a build like this. And then lastly, having something like Dynamo for super generation and recuperation for healing is quite honestly a must. So as we have covered our main primary weapon, here are the additional weapons that I'm using to support the build further. Having the No Survivors SMG is highly recommended if you're able to grab one for the special perk combo it has. My version has Demolitionist and Puglis combined, which is amazing for the Prismatic class and Fragment, Facet or Balance. With this here, I can easily cover my grenade and melee energy regeneration over time and thus be able to use my abilities quite easily. However, with how the abilities are set up currently, I would advise you get a secondary available that just has Puglis available as we can manage our grenade cooldown fairly well. Our strength and melee stat though requires a bit more focus and additional support. Having Cold Comfort with Chill Clip is the go-to weapon perk combo as it allows to make use of the facet of coverage and rune effect in one. The following has allowed my abilities to hit even more hard against enemies and running this in Legend campaign has made little work against most bosses. Of course, it's then recommended you have the right ammo mods added to also make full use of the effect over and over again. So there is both a lot to take in and not so much to take in while playing with the build. This build has seen a lot of users over the given time frame that Destiny has been around, so this shouldn't sound too strange to most players who are used to using Getaway Artists, Arc Subclass and No Time to Explain. With Prismatic available and the introduction to the Hellion aspect, we can have up to about 4 autonomous turrets to use which can be very nutty in most enclosed encounters. I use this in both campaign and additional activities just to see how well this build plays and if you are a solo player who needs that extra bit of firepower, but don't generally have the friends to help you out or teammates, then this right here is definitely going to help you out all the way through the given activity you have. You have so much buffs and debuffs going that you can easily run a legend content on your own and still come out on top in terms of damage. Now it may seem like I'm overhyping this since it's just come out, but it does really well when combining everything good that both light and dark subclasses have. I would even say this is the ideal build to have as a starting point within the prismatic area just so you can see the full effect of what it does and how you can then expand it further. Trust me, this may look confusing at first, but this is very tame in terms of what we can actually really bring out. So if you want a starting place for a prismatic build, while also having something functional, then quite honestly this is probably the best way to start it with this amazing warlock build. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub while here. I'll leave a dim link for the build below, I want more stuff like this than I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great to end today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.